Hi, Dan here from Mochueco Appliance Repairs. This is actually one of the very first videos I made years ago, so apologies for the unsteady camera work. But it's a guide to assessing a Fisher & Paykel smart drive washing machine. The common things to check when looking at the condition of the washing machine, um, it's made for in-house training, but hopefully you guys will find some of this useful. Right, this is Mochueco Appliance Repairs training video, technician training video number one which is the assessing of a smart drive, general condition of it. Two situations we're going to be doing this, uh, either when we're looking over a machine we've already found a fault and just seeing what else may be going to fail in the future. Obviously don't want to have to come back a few weeks or months later and also we don't want to spend have customers spend some money on a repair. That then turns out there's something else wrong that just makes it unviable. Or the other situation we could be doing these checks is we were looking at a machine to be sold second hand uh, or to be salvaged, deciding whether they're salvaging it for parts or if it's good enough to be used second hand. First step, which has probably been done while diagnosing the original problem, uh, is to check the fault codes. Preferably if we've got time, got laptop powered up the download so we can see the fault history and know a bit more, but at least have a fault code um, that can always point you in the direction of the most common issue. The things we're going to generally look over for the physical condition of the machine. Uh, looking inside the bowl here, we're looking for the spline drive, which we'll look at further in a second, but we're looking for any wear along the top of the neck ring here from this, um, sorry, from, from the neck ring wearing onto the water balance ring. The other thing too, as you can see, this neck ring around here is clean and in virtually new condition. If a machine, especially a five, five and a half, six and a half kg machine, the smaller machines, people load up quite heavily. You actually see black what looks like burn marks around here in melted plastic from where a load has been sitting over top of the machine over top of the ring when it started spinning so this one here we don't have anything in the way of the groove so that indicates our spline drive is probably pretty good and we wouldn't necessarily need to look any further um, unless we already had the inner bowl out agitator itself three fins they're all straight looking for those bend marks where they wear specifically like what this one is done here where it can bend um, or snap right off and obviously catch on washing. That marks on the agitator being the same agitator across all sizes. Again, it's often on the on some of the machines that have been heavier used. You'll see it in combination with the other wear there. So that looks good on this machine. And the other thing while we're just in the top here is we can give it a spin over, at least until the motor starts kicking in and braking, and have a listen to the bearings. And this one here, it hasn't running. It's got a bit of a rumble on it, that's why it's in the workshop at the moment, is for bearings to be done on it. And the final thing while we're at the top is the suspension. So pushing down and releasing. And this machine is quite young. As far as second, you know, used machines go, obviously not warranty or anything like that. So that suspension rod has got plenty of dampening. Um, if the rods are bouncy, so when we release it, it bounces up as fast as the hand releases and oscillates a couple of times, then it, again, it's probably had a hard life, heavy loads, and with worn suspension rods, It'll just go out of balance with any slightly unbalanced load. While we're working around the top here, especially if you've got a worn balance, going out of balance from worn suspension rods, is this drain hose here. So as you can see, there's a molded black plastic bung around the hose that then sits inside this um, plastic clip. And if the machine's going out of balance and moving a lot, it can, mostly on the older models, Smart Drive 9 and earlier, it can pull this hose out of this, this bung here. When that happens then, the bottom of this hose is actually rubbing on this sharp metal edge and will wear a hole through. And the drain hose extensions that have fission fiber for smart drives need usually two minimum, preferably three ridges to lock and unlock and seal. And often when they wear, it'll wear right on the first or second one. I have seen it where someone's got like a piece of um, rubber, looked like it was out of a car of some sort, um, you know, like. A piece of trim something basically a piece of rubber with a split cut in it so that it could sit over here you could probably use something like a hose of some kind to protect it but usually if that's pulled out then you know you've got balance problems now one other thing to look at is in this control board even if we're not having to open the control board up for control housing you can have look at other things
If we have any water leaks in here, then obviously that's not good news around the control board. Now this model, Smart Drive 12 or later, with the blue water valves, very unlikely they are going to leak. But the issue we have is a thermistor seal. This has got a thermistor seal on it, but I mean I've yet to see one actually leak. The earlier version, Smart Drive 11 or earlier, with the dual valve, well not sorry, the single, two single valves in the chamber, you're going to have either a thermistor seal here or a thermistor blanking seal. Or in some models, you're going to have a thermistor seal with a blanking plug sitting in it, and they're really susceptible to leaking. So this one here hasn't got any markings on it, but usually the rule of thumb is that, you know, four or five dollar seal. Now they're a couple of hundred dollars for a control board plus GST. Often, by the time it gets to the customer, you might as well throw that seal in uh, and then test it again afterwards. Because I have had some seals, probably about ten percent of these thermistor seals leak uh, straight away, and so you want to check that and and obviously not walk away and leave it running there. You can also have leaks from the inlet valve stem, but that's a bit more rare. While I'm at the top here, I can see we've got a purple wires on the RPS, so I already know that it's a uh, phase 7 or 36H RPS sealed type, but with the unsealed wiring harness, and that hasn't been upgraded to the fully sealed RPS yet. Uh, but they're definitely better than the original non-sealed PCBs. And then we're going to tilt over and have a look underneath the machine. And this one here has got a treat to store for us straight away. We have marks, oh, greasy, watery marks coming down from the motor. And we have this ring all the way around the inside. Well, it's, except where it's at the pump there. So this is a sign that bearing, or the main seal has been leaking water down through the bearing. And if we have a look up there, you can see where there's a little hole just below the main seal and just above the first bearing. So the idea is the water that does get past sits on top of that bearing and gets ejected out that hole um, rather than forcing it to only go down through the bearing nowhere else to go gives it a bit of an escape so this one straight off the bat we know we've got bearings of seals um, needed it's bearings of seal unless it's been done before in the past so if it was quiet when we're spinning it over and if we pull the the um, rotor and stator off in a second and the bearing looks clean uh, it could well be that it's especially this bad markings it could well be that it's a um it's you know this bad markings if it was all clean it's a historic job sometimes you can get a little bit of splatting around here and it could be hard to tell if it's just started or if it's been done before in the past drain pump um you're going to want to check the resistance or give it a test run oh we see if you've got a can of crc we have a can of crc on you a touch of crc in the bottom and lower and lower and top bushing little brass bushings in there get a little bit squeaky sometimes and so that will shut that up and then we also probably want to have a quick look at the rps on the earlier machines with the straight plain PCB on the RPS, we can actually just pop the rotor off and then look on the side of the PCB and get a pretty good idea of what it's like. This one here, we do actually want to look at the plug. Um, just give a quick squiz at that and see what, um, what corrosion there is on that plug and whether that needs replacing with the full sealed harness RPS. Just a couple of things you need to check on some of the older Smart Drives. Uh, Smart Drive 9 or earlier, we're going to have the reed switch, magnetic reed switch that sits just underneath this panel in about there. It runs up through here and then plugs into the outer balance uh, lid. Of course, the model doesn't have an outer balance lid harness here. The reed switches can corrode, get moisture inside them, they swell up and burst. Also, where the switch runs along, it's got to be sitting all the way up into the groove or it can get pinched between the uh, case and the chassis and short to earth. But if that happens, then the machine won't spin. Uh, it'll drain the water okay, but it won't fill and it won't spin because it thinks the lid is open. Sometimes I fail with lid closed position, that's pretty rare. And the second one is the outer balance switch that sits just underneath here. Um, if that gets corroded, especially if we've got a bit of moisture leaking from somewhere here, that'll get corroded. And then when it does go out of balance and just do an instantaneous trigger, the, the micro switch will get stuck in the... Uh, what's actually the condition, contact open position because these are normally closed contacts and then the machine is, is going to bring up the out of balance error um, and it, again it won't do anything because as soon as it goes to move it knows that out of balance switch is permanently triggered which it shouldn't be so those are the two things that have been removed from these later models and makes them a bit more reliable and then of course the later ones and this again when they get rid of the RPS that eliminates another another point of failure there as well